guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me on Blacksmith, we are going to be making the blacksmith calipers from the Stay Home, Stay Safe, Stay Blacksmithing kits, and I will be telling you who has won the soapstone holder. Okay, from your kits, you're gonna to need to find the little bag of nuts and bolts. You're also gonna to need to find the long bolt that might be a little bit rusty, and also, you want the remainder of your uh, 25 by 8 mil or inch by 5 16. Okay, so in this video we're going to be concentrating on creating these tapers. We're going to make three tapers in total. We're going to do this long one, this short one, and then a double taper. These are all flat tapers. We're also going to punch a series of holes uh, like these two here in the arms and also in the center here. We're also going to revisit the drawing out process that we covered in the soapstone holder. Now, if you'd like to know more about drawing out, I'm gonna roughly go over it in this video, but I'm not gonna go into great detail. However, a lot of what I did in this video to do this is in the previous video for the soapstone holder. So go and check this one out and then come back and join me for this one. We're trying to cover some core skills in these little kits. Um, ones which I think sometimes are a little bit looked over. So uh, one of the ways I've tried to make this uh, a little bit easier for people to get hold of is by making it so that you don't need to use any tongs. If you followed the processes from the previous episode correctly for making this so uh, soapstone holder, you should have about 150 millimeters of your material remaining. So four inches less than what there was basically, 100 mil less than what there was. We're going to start by drawing this down into a handle so that we've got something to hold. Again, the recap for that is best to watch the uh, soapstone holder because that's what that was about. And then we're going to basically create two smaller tapers on the end here and then chop off any of our excess, which should be about 100 mil if you haven't got enough. So there is room if you're, if you're careful to make, um, to make some mistakes here. Okay, mark your bar 80 millimeters or three inches and three sixteenths from one end. When your material's hot, we're going to forge it down into a square section. We're going to take the material down to 8mm square, or 5 sixteenths square. Work down towards your centre dot marks. The best way to do this is to use a technique called heeling. As I get closer to the centre dots, I'm going to tip the hammer back into its heel, and then that's going to make the surface area of the hammer smaller and give me more accuracy. Alternatively, find a different way to do this process. It's faster and more accurate. I'm using a guillotine tool and a fly press. As with any drawing out process, using a technique that you're comfortable with is important. I like to use a BIC in combination with a flat or round side of my hammer. I'm then going to take the corners off of my stock and make this into an 8mm octagon or a 5 16th octagon. In order to make this look good, make sure all your sides are even. Work one half of the bar and then move to the other end of the bar like a tube of toothpaste and work on the corners on the other end. It's important to make sure your work and your working areas stay clean. A good brushing and removing scale from the anvil will give you a good finish. I'm going to create two set downs 90 degrees to each other to create an area where I can make a loop which can be used as a hoop to hang up my tooling. I did a similar technique in the soapstone video where I made the tooling for the die for the soapstone. Forge the material down to eighth of an inch or three millimeters and then take it round. If you spend some time on this it can look really good. Use your hammer in a T-shape flick it round 90 degrees and then round that up over the bic. If you want more detail on this, definitely check out the soapstone video. Okay, the reason I've done the handle first is so that we can hold on to it for a bit longer whilst we start drawing out our tapers. So the next job to do is draw out one of the arms for the calipers. Now this set of calipers is gonna have two arms on it. So what I'm gonna do initially is I'm gonna put a bit of a set down in here first uh, and I'm going to start drawing this material out into a rectangle and then we're going to start forging our tapers on. So let's get on. I've marked 40 millimetres from one end, so that's about an inch and a half from one end and I put two centre dot marks on here. We're going to start this process by creating a set down. I'm going to put one of the centre dots on the edge of the anvil nearest to me and I'm then going to start forging in a step. I'm going to take the material to half its original thickness. This stock is 25 mil 
or an inch in thickness. So I'm going to take it down to about 13, 12 millimeters by half inch. Once I've drawn the material down so that it's half inch by eight millimeters, I'm going to start creating the taper. In order to do this, I'm going to use the BIC. This is a great way to create a taper without much trouble. Just hold the material at an angle on the BIC or the horn and start hammering. As you do so, this will create a curve and this curve can be gently, gently nurtured into a taper. Tidy the taper up on the anvil. You want to be careful not to collide the hammer with the anvil face, so you might want to work right on the far edge of the anvil, the anvil furthest away from you. Bring the hammer in at an angle and start creating nice clean tapers. Now it's time to punch the hole. Find one of the remaining centre dots from our set down, measure 10 millimetres down or 3 eighths of an inch and find the centre of the material. Then we're going to take our punch here which has a diameter of an eighth of an inch or 3 millimetres and we're going to start punching our hole. When your material is hot, find your centre dot, give it a tap with your punch and have a look. If you're happy with the location, give it a second go and have a good look. We're going to punch through about two thirds of our initial thickness of our material. When we're happy, we'll flip the material over, find the shadow or the shine spot where our hole was punched through from the other side. And then hopefully we'll be able to knock ourselves a loose slug. Take the same punch and slightly open the hole a couple of times on both sides and make sure you keep your material nice and straight. A good brushing always helps. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to take the bolt, the long bolt that's in the kit. This is eight mil round. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop the head off the bolt and then I'm gonna forge a small um, taper, round taper on this end. And then I'm gonna, after I've done that, because this will let me hold it with a pair of tongs a bit easier, make the material a bit longer. After I've done that, I'm gonna chop the threads off and I'm just going to use a grinder just to grind a little taper on the back there so our drift can pop through at the other end. The first thing that we're going to do, like with our tapers on our caliper arms, is we're going to start forging a taper by using the curve of the BIC. To do this I'm using the flat of my hammer and I'm rotating the uh, bolt through 90 degrees every time and then taking off the corners and creating an octagon shape and then I'm going to come and work on the anvil face just to tidy everything up and keep it nice and straight. Now I'm going to round this up. As you can see here, I keep hitting the anvil face. So I'm going to work over my hardy hole and allow my hammer to fall into the hardy so that it doesn't come into contact and allows me to make a nice round area. Now I'm going to use a grinder just to take the back off of this bolt so that when we punch our drift through, it'll go all the way through like I'm going to show you now and not get stuck. Again, keep everything nice and straight. Let's bend up the caliper arms. Firstly, I'm going to take some water and I'm going to quench off the hole that we've just punched. This is liable to collapse if it's hot when we're bending up. And we don't want this part to bend, we want it to stay as it is. I'm going to take my hammer and I'm going to hold it in a T-shape quite close to the hammer head. And I'm going to start using the bit to help me develop the shape that I want for the caliper. I'm using a stroking motion in combination with a a process where I'm holding one point on the BIC, rotating the work around and then using the hammer to get the bend. I then use the BIC in order to create a nice form, give it a good brush and make sure it's flat. Okay, it's time to make the longer caliper arm. I measure 60 millimeters or three inches and one eighth from one end of the bar. I'm then going to repeat the set down process. I'm going to take the material to half its thickness again and this should mean that the material, if it's at the same width that it was originally, should double in length. Once it's doubled in length, I'm going to measure about a third of the material length in from the end, and that's going to become the taper. That taper should be double the length again of what you started with. Then we're going to punch the hole. Okay, if you follow me, uh, we should have something that looks a bit like this. I was worried there wasn't going to be enough material in these bars to make a mistake on this project and also uh, with the um, soapstone holder, but there's there's plus 100 mil plus four inches there So if you did make a mistake um, and um, if you had already made a mistake You could make the handle a little bit shorter, but there's definitely enough material to make the soapstone holder twice um, And if you're careful or if you shorten the handle you will get a, a second Tie out, but you won't be able to make the body again. There's not enough material for that, but however 
We've got our long time, uh, we're sorry, we've got our long um, caliper and our short caliper, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a smaller taper out on this piece here, I've marked this up, from these center dots to these center dots is 100 mil or four inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just chop this off with an angle grinder, stick this back in the fire, and then we're gonna do um, a double-sided taper on this one. And then we're gonna do a bit of chisel work, we're gonna cut the taper and split it, punch two more holes, and do some assembly. I've also cut these and left this little tab on, and the reason for that is I, when I come to grind these up in a little bit, I'll be able to make the most of that shape and have a nice round end on there, which should look really good. Okay, so I've got my material hot, and I'm gonna bring it up about two inches. I know, I know this measurement because I use it a lot, but if you want to measure it and mark it with the center dot, you could. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the round side of my hammer and the bic, and I'm just gonna do a slightly different process this time. I'm gonna start forging down about, at, well, at the point where I want to start forging, and I'm gonna bring that material down into a bit of a taper, like squeezing toothpaste. And then every time I turn the material around, I'm gonna come a little bit less. I also took a bit of thickness out of the actual stock behind the taper, I wanted this to be a bit longer, and then tidied up the taper itself on the anvil face like I did with all of the other tapers. Spend a bit of time on this, it's good to, it's good to get this right. Take off the corners and make sure everything's flat and straight and looks really smart, sharp and tidy. It's also really important to keep your material clean as you're going through the process and clean off your anvil. Give it a good wire brushing, blow down the anvil face and make sure that everything's smart and tidy and that way you'll get a really nice finish on your material. Okay, so I've drawn this out now, I'm quite happy with it. I've left this quite thick at the end, it's about uh, eight mil or five sixteenths. Uh, the original starting stock thickness at the end. It's 140 mil long, which should be just five inches and five eighths, something like that. So now what we need to do is we need to split the end. I'm not going to split the end very far, I'm only going to split about an inch up uh, at the very most, three quarters of an inch, so 25 mil, 20 mil up. And then we're going to bend these little bits out and they're going to become each side of the caliper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fit our little arms and then uh, hopefully make it all fit together and work together. Okay, using a cold chisel, I'm gonna mark up where I'm gonna start when the material comes hot out of the fire. And then I've used this slightly rounded chisel here. There's a video of me making this, so I'll put a link hopefully up. And I'm gonna cut through the material, separate it about halfway through, and then I'm gonna use another piece of mild steel on the anvil face so I can split this apart and I don't damage my anvil face or my tooling. Then on the bic, I'm just gonna bend those two sides over and tidy it up with an angle grinder. You can use a file if you want. I also tidied up the arms. And again, you can use a file for this process. Okie dokie, so whatever happens here now, um, sort of line everything up roughly. I'd give measurements for this, but unfortunately, it's one of those things where it depends on how accurate you've been to what I've done, whether or not it'll be anything like mine. Um, I know some guys who did the chalk holders got very close and I was out of to help them with some measurements afterwards, which I'm happy to do with this project as well. But um, for this, it is, it is a case of sort of just kind of eyeing it up. I mean, I've, I've thinned out a piece of chalk here and I'm, gonna, um, I'm just going to try and get the middle on that one and the same on that one. I don't think that's going to be the middle, but I'm just going to mark out kind of where the horizontal height is. There, I'm going to take that off now and have a look at this one. Let me just sort of place that there okay so I'm not in the middle which is which is fair enough and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try and roughly work out where the middle is I think the middle is a bit further over that way a bit closer to that one there and then I've got these horizontals that sort of match up I think some things in blacksmithing are a little bit eyeball-y yeah, they're not in line at all Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna center dot those now, and then once I've center dot them, I'm gonna punch them through again like we did before, obviously keeping this end cold. Um, and if you're unhappy with this area up here, what we're gonna do in a minute is I'm just gonna run a grind around there and just tidy up that, um, that area there so it's a bit nicer. And uh, you can do the same, you will have just seen me doing it on here, just taking some of those burrs off and stuff and just made everything look a bit smarter than it was. What we'll then do is we'll end up bolting this together. I think I'm probably gonna end up having one underneath and one on top. 
Um, and then once we've done that, I don't know, that might, I might do that, I might not do that. And then once we've done that, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna go and make, um, get it all put together, put it in the fire, make, make sure everything's adjusted up nicely, get it all looking really tidy, and then we're pretty much finished. Okay, so I'm gonna punch the holes in the body of the calipers a lot like how we did on the arms. Um, because of the size difference in the material here, I was able to punch both these holes at the same time. And it, this is a good example of me using the temperature differences in order to shear the slugs out. As the material gets colder, I'm able to shear the material away as opposed to punching. I'm then gonna take the same punch and I'm gonna ever so slightly drift out those holes again, a lot like I did previously on the caliper arms. This just means that the drift will pass through a little, little bit easier and there's no risk of me um, drawing through the material with the drift. Drawing through is where the material's pushed through into the hole on the other side. This is why you should bolster your material as well. I also used a drill bit just to ream the holes out ever so slightly to make sure they'd fit nice. Okay, so I've bolted this together without the bolts that are in the kit, and the reason I've done that is um, because I'm gonna put this back in the fire. Um, I'm gonna go on to rivet this together, and I think it's a good thing to do to show the riveting in this video, um, because you can, or, or at least there'll be a link to the riveting in this video, um, because I think riveting this together is gonna to look a lot tidier than with the nylocks and the, or, and the nylocks or the spring washers, depends what you wanna use. Um, or you could use both if you've got enough space in there. Um, but the thing that you need to do is you need to have these tight enough so they stay put, but you don't want them uh, too tight that you can't move them. And in order to do that normally, what I would do is I would make a spring washer of types, and then as I'm riveting it together, I would use the spring washer to create uh, the ability to keep that tight. Um, so I am gonna go on to do that, but the last thing to do if you're in this position, uh, the last thing to do is we need to get this hot now. Now this is why I've swapped bolts over because I don't want to melt the nylock bolts. Um, however, if you're at home um, and you haven't got anything, you'll have to rely on the spring washers because um, the nylocks um, unfortunately will melt. Also these are galvanised and I don't recommend you go sticking galvanising in your forges at home. Um, but it was one way of getting to the bottom of this problem without having to cause loads of other problems. So um, it was the lesser of many evils. So at this point, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna basically heat this end up. I'm gonna get all of these to match up and look really nice and tidy in their closed position. That's this position here. And then what we will be able to do is uh, set this up so that we can use it as a set of really nice calipers. They look great, I'm really pleased with them. Now that I've bolted this all together, I've heated up just the very ends of the calipers, being careful not to burn them, and I'm gonna use a soft mallet, and I'm just gonna tap them so that they all line up nicely. Doesn't matter if they're a bit bent and off-centered, this is exactly the purpose. And I'm gonna use my hand hammer and tidy things up. To make the spring washers, I forged some of the recycled forklift truck tire in the kits into some round stock that measured 16 millimeters or 5 eighths in diameter. Okay, I'm really sorry, but this is about as good as I can do. I can't get the camera to focus any better on this. But basically this is a washer. It's got a hole the size of the rivet, which is eight mil through the center for like five sixteenths or whatever. And then I've put a massive um, countersink in there and then the other side is flat and when that's under compression that acts like a spring and because this is forklift truck time I can heat treat this so this becomes springy so this should work like a spring. Okay I've used bolts here to make these rivets and I cover this in the video which I'll leave in the link in the top corner. I basically also cover how to make all the tooling that I'm using here in order to make these rivets. What you want to do is you want to put your washer uh, and your arm on the rivet first. Line up your arms nicely so they don't get in the way and take the round side of a hammer and just forge those rivets down nice and flat. No need to dome them. I'm gonna get everything nice and hot and give it a good brushing. And then I'm gonna quench everything off to make sure that those spring washers, which are made of tine, are nice and tough and then wipe everything down with some linseed oil. Okay, this turned out great. I'm super pleased with this. If you do have any questions or you'd like some help with putting this together at any point, um, feel free to try and contact me. Either drop me a message in the comments down below. Uh, you can ping us over an email. I will try my best to get to it or, or DM me on um, 
uh, Instagram. I will try my best to get back to you with some help if you need it, um, especially the guys that have bought the kits. Um, I've messed you about a bit with those, so um, I'm, I apologize for that now. But yeah, if you, if you are having any, any problems, you need some help, you want some information, DM me or message me, email me, whatever, and I will try my hardest to uh, give you a, an answer to your question ASAP. Um, came out really well, it's a great project. It's one where you can really t take off from this little project. This, I think, is hard, complicated little project. However, this one was a little bit step further on from that one, but they're still both really rewarding. And they're both super useful tools. They're both things that you can use in your workshop on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, this is basically um, one way of measuring flat stock like the flat stock that we used in the video. Okay, so say you're forging some flat stock of some description, you can set one arm up to measure one width, uh, one dimension, and you can set the other arm up to measure the other dimension. That way it allows you to keep forging and not having to keep relying on a, me uh, a ruler or something uh, if, you're, if you're doing flat bar. There is another way to make these, I'll just go and grab that to show you now. And alternatively, you can make a single point uh, set of calipers, double calipers like this one. I think these look much nicer. However, they're slightly trickier to make than these because the, uh, the rivet on the centre here needs to be square uh, and then turn into a round rivet. If you don't do that, when you move one arm, the other arm moves. So in the centre here, it's square. And I have seen people fire weld that rivet in place. So these are quite tricky, these ones, even though they do look a bit sim a bit simpler than this one. They are very tricky in their, uh, their own. Right, I'll leave a link to this video up here in the card. I think I've got the right side. And I'll also leave a link to a video where I made the... And I'll also leave a link to a video where I made these little darlings. The punch is here and then there's um, a chisel and a uh, little fuller. Now, the, you'll be seeing these soon in another video. I made these a while ago. They're great little tools. I definitely recommend you check out that video um, because I use these a lot now since I've made them. Um, I'll leave a card up here as well. Hopefully they will both come up at the same time. And now for the winner of the soapstone holder. I watched the video through and I counted 16 chalks. I watched it through again. I got 17 chalks. Ella watched it through. She got 16 chalks. She watched it again. She got 17 chalks. Basically, I'm gonna say if you put 16 or 17, you'll get entered into winning the, uh, the draw for the soapstone holder. Uh, there are only six names, I believe, remember off the top of my head. Uh, I will basically number each one of the names as I write it down, when I, first name that came across as I came across it, and I'll put a one to six next to it. I'll roll a dice, whatever that comes out at, uh, that, that number corresponding to that name will be the okay, winner. I thought there were six, but there were actually four. So we've got uh, Coffee Forge, Zenith Frog Forge, Fire 360 Melter, and then the Lord Wolf, uh, and then two re-rolls, all right? So um, this isn't a normal dice either. This is a poker dice. Don't ask me. Um, anyway, so... Um, one ace, two king, three queen, jack, so on and so forth. All right, best of luck. Ace, Mr. Coffee, you win. I'm not doing anything with the calipers. I think I'm gonna keep these. However, the uh, center punches I am going to give away, they will be in the next video. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna be doing some uh, wire Damascus, uh, wire rope Damascus. We're gonna be doing some Damascus and also we are going to be doing some carbon steel. The reason the kits were delayed is because I didn't have enough steel to send out to people. I really apologize for that uh, delay. I should have been a bit more um, I should have been a bit more switched on when it came on to uh, sending the kits out. And I really do apologize for my tardiness. I believe all the kits are out now. There might be two that are waiting to go. But however, most of the kits are out now if they were ordered um, ages ago. And also another video will be up in about a fortnight's time for doing the Damascus. So uh, bear with me. They are. Thank you so much for joining me. I really, really enjoyed making this. Uh, it came out pucker. Um, if you do make one, send me a picture and I will share it on Instagram stories and I'll share a link to your Instagram as well so people can go and see all the lovely things that you make. If you do blacksmithing or whatever you do, really. Um, that is everything. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a subscriber, ring that bell for notifications. It tells you every time I make videos. I try to make videos 
as often as possible, about two a week. I'm gonna try and squeeze a live out at some point. I keep saying that, but I am. When I get five minutes, I'm gonna try and do a live. And um, yeah, if you'd like to support the channel in any way, there's a couple of ways you can help me out. You can share this video. You can drop a comment down in the comments down below. Tell me what you thought of the video. Ask me any questions. If you've got any questions about the project, just questions in general. I try to answer them. I can't guarantee I will, but I will definitely try. You can go check out my website, you can send me an email, you could even uh, go and follow me on Instagram. Like I said, I post stories and all sorts of other good things as I'm going along on the old Instagram. Um, and also I like to um, I like to give people shout out and I can talk to people a bit easier on the old Instagram as well if you wanted to DM me. Um, you could also go and check out my Etsy. That's a place where you can buy tools and stock. Well, you might not be able to buy stock at the minute, but you can buy stuff over there like t-shirts and uh, merchandise and hammers and tools for making hammers and all that good stuff. So definitely go and check that out as well. I've also been doing a series of videos where I've been showing people how to make hammers or how I make hammers at least anyway. And we made this one by hand. This is a hand forged hammer that I've made. I'm raffling it off. You can get a raffle ticket for this on the Etsy or if you buy anything off of the Etsy, you get entered into the raffle. So best of luck with that if you have bought a ticket. Uh, that's everything. I will leave a link up here to a video that YouTube thinks is good for you. This down here is a link to a video uh, that was posted very recently indeed. This down here is a video that I think you should probably watch. It'll probably be this one or it will be the uh, center punch video depending on when that comes out. And then also I will leave a subscribe button up here. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you guys and girls later. Bye bye.